Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Griffin, better known as the Fanatical Futurist. This morning I've been teaching Year 8 about ChatGPT. I've also been teaching a couple of teachers about ChatGPT. Uh, we had 45 teachers in a session last Tuesday, basically at one of the private schools in Hampshire. And frankly, I mean, they're already aware of the technology, but it's sent more than a tidal wave basically through the uh, academic establishment. Now, what I want to do basically with this little video is actually sort of show you the different ways that we can actually use ChatGPT within an educational setting. Now, this is a live session, that's it, so it's going to be a little bit temperamental because I think uh, OpenAI have been playing around with some of the filters and some of the different parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been noticing that sort of prompts that used to work kind of now either don't work and or work differently. So um, we can start off with here. So when we actually have a look at what we're doing with ChatGPT, um, there's a whole variety of different things. Now, on the one hand, a lot of people are kind of fearful about the future. So over the past sort of three weeks, I've been on three different continents. Uh, I've spoken with the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Science and Technology in China. I've been to Hong Kong, basically I've been to Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur. I've been to Singapore, I've been to Paris a number of different times, et cetera, et cetera. And ChatGPT is the one thing that everybody talks about. But they're also increasingly sort of worried about the prospect of automation of the blue collar workforce, but also the white collar workforce. So as I've sort of been traveling with my keynotes, I've been noticing that a lot more people are actually, instead of talking about 50% of jobs being partially or fully automatable by 2030, some people have actually been saying it's 100%. I definitely don't think it's 100%, um, but I think it probably is closer to 90% of jobs that we see today are partially or fully automatable. And there is a difference basically between the two. Now, I used ChatGPT with my son to actually write this book. Uh, we wrote it in 20 minutes. If you download it from the website, you can see exactly how we created it. We used Midjourney for the images and so on and so forth. So these technologies are powerful. Yeah. So when we automate a particular job or task, we actually democratize access to that particular job or task. Um, but anyway, back to the sort of case in point, we're going to use ChatGPT to help teachers be more productive, but also students augment their learning and improve learning outcomes. So that's really what we're looking to do here. So um, from a student's perspective, I can obviously use ChatGPT to cheat. So I'm just going to be using a variety of different examples, but you kind of get the gist. So write an essay on dinosaurs. So dinosaurs are particularly popular with the year eights this morning. So for those of you outside of the UK, year eights are kind of 12 year olds. Um, so they were, <laughs> they were very, very excited about anything to do with dinosaurs. And when we were using mid journey, doing text to images, they were very excited about creating dinosaurs that were eating chicken nuggets. So anyway, um, so what we have here is basically we've got ChatGPT actually writing an essay. Now, we all know that realistically students should actually be writing these essays themselves. Um, and the reason for that is because we still as students need to understand a lot of the fundamental concepts that go along basically with the things that we're doing. You know, whether that's art or music, whether it's science and technology, whether it's English and languages and so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, here we go. So this thing's actually generating, uh, I mean, yeah, it's doing very well. As, it, as you can see, it's a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be done by now. Um, so anyway, and this is actually sort of, this looks more like a bullet point essay than an actual essay. And again, you know, when we were doing this this morning, it actually wrote a decent essay. Um, so it's now decided to write it in a different style. So again, you know, these AIs basically can be finicky. Um, on the one hand, that kind of comes down to the prompts that you use, but it also comes down to the parameters and the settings that the manufacturers who have made these things are actually sort of pushing out to the general public. Um, still going, and we're concluding. Okay, so now from a student's perspective, now let's say that this is actually an essay that a student has produced. Now we all know that this is actually produced by an AI. Now. This is where I'm going to actually do something that's fairly interesting from a plagiarism perspective, um, because most teachers will actually sort of take this essay that a student might have handed in and then ask the student whether or not they've actually, uh, whether or not they actually did it themselves. Now, in the UK, the AJ basically recently passed a rule saying that if 
you ask students whether or not their, their homework's being done by AI and they say that it hasn't, you should actually get them to sign that they haven't used AI to do it. That's the UK government's response to artificial intelligence basically in education so far. Fantastic. I always say that regulators are 10 years behind the curve. Um, brilliant. Um, so anyway, um, so what we do basically as a teacher is we sort of run this through a plagiarism checker. Um, but I'm finding that plagiarism checkers basically are typically about 2% accurate. So now this is where it sort of gets interesting. So we can actually use different marking rubrics to mark this essay. Now, we know the AI wrote this. So if I put mark this, mark, actually mark this out of a score of 10 for the following individual points, grammar, spelling, and accuracy, what it will now do is it should now say, frankly, I can't mark myself. Um, okay, so where 10 is the top mark. Okay, so let's have a look. <laughs> so ironically, earlier, it was actually telling me that it couldn't actually mark its own work. Uh, so <laughs> It's either having a bit of an off day, hasn't had its coffee or whatever. But actually, this is what I was hoping it was going to do. So the idea here is if a student has actually written an essay by themselves, they can copy and paste that work basically into ChatGPT and using a kind of really basic marking rubric, which in the UK we can actually assign to uh, things like the UK GCSE or A-level basic rubrics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you design them in a particular way, that's kind of a little bit of an art itself. Uh, as you see here, we can actually get these AIs to mark the homework that I've done as a student before I hand it into the actual teacher. So in this particular case, it's giving this particular piece of work, you know, 9.5, a 10 and a 9. So it's rating it really highly. So I'm glad that it's actually a, uh, I mean, we've got, an, we've got a, in the UK, from a marking perspective, I think we've got an A here, yeah? So nine at GCSE level. But this is sort of where I think basically when we use ChatGPT to start augmenting children's learning, this is where we can get some really interesting results. So now I can put in, how would I improve, how would I, spelling, how would I improve this essay? And ChatGPT should give us a couple of prompts. So as a student, I've written something, uh, I've asked ChatGPT in, chat gpt to mark it against the official uk schools marking rubrics and because it's not a 10 out of 10 i've now asked it how i can actually improve it and as, as you can see here it says expand the introduction provide more specific examples discuss scientific controversies uh, address the cultural impact of dinosaurs improve the flow and coherence of the essay enhance the conclusion proofread and edit it okay so we've actually got, so now what we've done is as a student, I've actually used ChatGPT to give me some pointers on where I can actually improve whatever work I'm actually looking to do. So that's, that's sort of stage one. Um, now from a teacher's perspective, uh, I can actually now get it to create a lesson plan, create a lesson plan about dinosaur, actually well about dinosaurs, dinosaurs. Um, so, you know, one of the things that got teachers the most excited was the fact that we can actually use ChatGPT to create lesson plans. So, I mean, yeah, you can use it to create any kind of lesson plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, and it'll go off, and this one's generally a long one because they always are. So this is the lesson plan that a teacher would normally produce done in not much time. Um, now, ChatGPT is really good at actually kind of creating drafts. So we could argue this is doing 80% of the work for us, and then we just need to proofread it, top and tail it, add in whatever things basically that we actually want to add in as teachers. Um, so for example, the biology teacher last week noted that ChatGPT had actually left organization out of its uh, lesson plan. So organization is human organs, that kind of stuff. And when we asked ChatGPT why it had missed it out and to put it back in, it said, sorry, and it put it into the lesson plan. Okay, so anyway, it'll just keep going. Um, so if anyone wants a dinosaur lesson plan, then you can just copy it off the screen or you can do your own, that's it. And uh, I reckon it'll, okay, it'll, it'll take a little while still um, to put that lesson plan together, but nevertheless, save me a headache of trying to put together a dinosaur or paleontological, paleontological 
uh, lesson plan. And there we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about while ChatGPT is actually uh, doing this, actually it's finished now, is revision notes. So again, from a student's perspective, I can use it to create a set of revision notes. I could say for dinosaurs, but again, you can do anything you like, biology, STEM, photosynthesis, you know, whatever it is you're up to. Um, and you can put in whatever kind of format you want. So depending how you actually learn, um, I'm sort of more visual typically, but you know, if we're putting in a kind of bullet point um, revision plan, then here we go. So now what we have, again, as students to improve learning outcomes, I'm using ChatGPT to create a set of revision notes for upcoming exams. Now, there's lots and lots of things. There's lots and lots of iterations and things basically that we can actually uh, do here. But as you can see, you know, you can either add in examples, you could pad it out, you could summarize it further, you could actually create a set of revision notes that are sort of more text-based rather than bullet point based and so on and so forth. Um, and you know, so that's that. So there's lots of different ways basically that we can actually use ChatGPT in education. We can use it to create controversies. Um, I can also get it to create quizzes if we're going to be teaching uh, students knowledge of dinosaurs or whatever it is that we care about, keeps going. So maybe we'll do a little quiz next. Now I did find yesterday, I did this with my eight year old daughter. I asked it to create a maths quiz for an eight year old. And uh, one of the questions was, what's the value of pi? Now, I don't really think that Pippa actually knows the value of pi as an eight year old, uh, because most adults don't. Plus it's an infeasibly large number. But um, if we do dinosaurs, create a quiz for uh, 12 year olds on dino, Source with I don't know we'll do five five quiz questions otherwise we'll be here all day plus my spellings off but here we go so now we've actually created if I'm a teacher I've created a little quiz basically for my class um, sometimes it generates it with the answers sometimes it doesn't um, but you could put in you know and include the answers at the end of the session if it doesn't actually put the answers in. And then the next thing that I've been talking about at schools, et cetera, et cetera, basically is as we automate, as we use these tools to automate one job, one set of tasks, here we go, it's got an answer key, um, that democratizes access to those skills for everybody else. So this morning I showed students how we can create a machine vision application using chat GPT. And this will be the last bit of this particular demo and then I'll can it and upload it to wherever I upload it. But uh, now in Java, write a machine vision application uh, to identify, I don't know, we'll do dinosaurs, we'll keep dinosaur theme going. Um, so this is now going to write a little piece of code basically for a machine, for a machine vision application that will be able to identify dinosaurs. I'm not a programmer, um, but nevertheless, it still does a good job according to uh, some of the technology teachers. So here we go. So what it will do is it will now sort of, sort of, sort of walk you through the different steps that are actually involved. So, you know, these are some of the things basically that you've actually got to do when it comes to developing your own piece of software. And as you can see, kind of all makes sense. So this is kind of the pre-prep work. And then once it's done this, it will then start actually writing the code. So it'll write that. It's not gonna write a huge amount of code, that's it, but nevertheless, you can see it's writing code. So we had a couple of 12-year-old uh, programmers basically in the lesson this morning, that's it, and they were like, oh. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So here we go. Now, as a non-coder, because I talk about the democratization of skills, I don't know what this is, if it's correct and everything else. So there's a couple of interesting things that we can actually do with these large language model AIs. Now, firstly, I could actually get it to critique its own work. Now, what we found is when we get these AIs to critique their own work, they've improved the output by about 30%. 
Okay, so that's one thing. So it's a little bit like giving AI an inner voice saying, well, you know, are you sure that you've created some really good work? And it goes back and checks it and says, oh, actually I could have done something a little bit differently. So anyway, we've got our little program here. Um, and then I say, how would I run this? Okay. So again, basically to understand what I'm talking about, it's got to understand reasoning, context. It's got to know that I'm actually not talking about running a race, that I'm running a program, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really where the skill of these large language models actually comes in. And now it's telling me how I would actually run it. So for example, install a JDK, set up a new Java project, install DJL dependencies. I don't even know what that is. Um, and off we go. But you can see how all of a sudden we're democratizing access to skills, to different activities, etc., etc. We can see how we are automating different people and tasks, but we can also see how we're augmenting different skills and tasks as well. So depending on the side of the fence that you actually sit, if you're the programmer that's being automated by this, that's bad. But if I'm a non-coder, I like this because I can now start writing software. If I use mid-journey, I can now start using text to AI art, text to video, text to music, text to pretty much anything. Um, and if you are interested in sort of learning more about these different technologies while it still goes, um, you can watch my YouTube channel, which is Fanatical Futurist. You can go to the 311, 311institute.com website forward slash insights on the URL, and you can actually download a book that I wrote about four years ago on the future of generative artificial intelligence. I am a futurist after all. I've seen this stuff coming, and I've been talking about this stuff for easily seven years. That's it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. That's it. Let me know what you think. That's it. Like, subscribe, do all the usual things, basically, that those influencers actually sort of have you do, etc., etc. Uh, if you like something, basically then let me know. If you don't like something, let me know. Basically, if you think I could actually do something a bit better, let me know. I'm always open to critique and suggestions, etc., etc. And as for me, that's it. I'm out. Goodbye.